Welcome to okay. another. Oh, well, hey, I can't. Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't know you were. I was just going to uh, say, I can't, I can't bring it up yet, but I didn't know you were starting. That's on me. That's cool. It's cool. Uh, welcome to another OUinsider.com podcast. I'm RJ Young. I'm joined by OUI staff writer Colin Kennedy. We had a little pre production meeting and we're giddy because stuff. Stuff is weird. It's a very weird time, Colin. Content, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is everywhere. <laughs> Who would have thought? What a time we live in. Man. Oh my we're just God. having a blast. I'm ready to talk some sports. I swear, like, three weeks ago, we were like, what are we going to talk about? Like, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> and now, all right, now let's start. Let's talk about Nathan Rollins' Kai Bonge, uh, who we saw – a flurry of crystal balls come in with like if you check the timestamps and I really love this feature on 247 sports where you can check on the rankings check on the kids and there we had a lot of detailed information over here that's quite literally free you can go check out this stuff but like one of the things that I'm always interested in is not just what the crystal balls say but when they're logged and now that we have this really cool feature called confidence score that allows an analyst to give a rating of 0 to 10 10 being most confident 0 being not confident at all as to how they think that this crystal ball is going to go. We saw a flurry for NRK as he's going by. And they were like two minutes apart for like all the national guys. Like they were all on the same group chat going, hey, did you see this? Yeah, I saw that. Let's go put the, uh, the crystal balls in. It's like, I, I want to say it was like five in like three minutes there, Colin. Oh, it was a bunch. I mean, I got a text and I was like, are you seeing what's going on? And I was Flipping over, next thing you know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of OU emblems. I know as soon as Huffman puts something in, oh, yeah. I'm like, all right, bet. It's over. Right. I mean, Huffman knows what he's talking about, especially when it comes to NRK. So then I started calling people, and next thing you know, I'm getting the tips. I put one in. I believe my top of the score is like a seven or eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, okay, he's approaching a announced commitment date, June 17th, if I remember correctly. Right. I, 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 from what I could gather – it makes a ton of sense right now for OU to be the favorite because obviously, as we've documented on OU Insider, the staff has really pushed for him. Jamar Kane, who has become an incredible recruiting weapon, has been instrumental in the recruitment of NRK. And obviously, the staff has kind of wanted him to announce his decision a little bit earlier than maybe he would originally anticipate. But now that it's kind of been set in an earlier manner, that to me indicates that, okay, something's trending in the Sooners' direction. In addition to that, I thought that Huffman brought up a fantastic point on 24-7 Sports when he said, look, Stanford's admission takes a while. I mean, it, it takes a long time for these kids to really have an idea of whether or not they can be accepted and actually be on campus at Stanford University. And when you factor that in, that also would indicate that, okay, this guy's making a decision when he knows full well he might may not have a guaranteed spot on Stanford's roster or in their classroom. Now, I'm not saying that because I don't know what the kid's grade situation is. I'm just talking about the process that's actually implemented by the university. So, knowing that hurdle to jump, it would make a lot of sense that Oklahoma, who doesn't necessarily have that kind of obstacle in his way, could say, look, man, if you commit to us right now, we've got you. We're, you're good. I mean, you can be a member of the class tomorrow. So, I'm not calling it a guaranteed done deal, but in my opinion... All the arrows are indicating that Oklahoma is in a great position for a very, very good defensive line. Right. I mean, uh, let's start with the particulars about for folks that aren't caught up on this. Rollins is six foot seven, two forty. So long, long, long. Two sports star in basketball and football, as you might imagine. He's not necessarily, you know, out there being a jockey. He's getting it done on a basketball court. But I'm taking a look at the at the crystal balls here, right? Because like. I haven't logged one, and I probably should, but I'm looking at Brandon Huffman, who's 52 for 52 in crystal balls this year. Greg Biggins, 76 for 76. Our guy, Drum, 24, 27. Blair Angelo is 43 of 43. I mean, Wilt Fong is 252 for 254, and, and you, my man, are 15 of 15. And we I, all of these crystal balls came in on the same date. <laughs> And we got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six within two hours of each other. But no. It, that was going to be my point. I was like, they were all in the same few hours, man, let alone a day. Right. 
So this is the number two player in the state of Oregon. Uh, it's the top 20 strong side defensive end and top 300 player in, uh, well, 315 in the 247 Sports Composite. He is a four-star recruit. And yeah, all of a sudden the defensive line is long and lean. And that's, I mean, that's what you want. Now, we're going to go ahead and continue to count the junior college products uh, that, they're, that they got, right? And we're going to count Clayton Smith. And we're going to count, well, I mean... If Kai Bonge doesn't commit, it'll be a shock at this point. But here's the thing about Stanford. One, Oklahoma has already reeled one away, right, in the national single-season record holder for receiving yards, one Marvin Mims. And this would be another, but because that process does take some time, right, I am not at all certain right now that this commitment sticks if it took place in the first place because if you know that you got in, that might change some things because, like, I'm talking with a number of, of recruits, not unlike you, that are considering low major, uh, mid major, and FCS schools, right? And, like, Ivies and academies have been through Oklahoma and parts of North Texas like gangbusters here in the fa- last few weeks. But the, the king of those, right, is Stanford. If Stanford offers you and you get in, it's real difficult to tell your parents you're not going to go there because, one— it is a Power 5 football program, and David Shaw had went like, like I want to say like six years until he had a bad year, and it's Stanford. Like, how are you going to go wrong? You can get drafted, and you graduate from Stanford. So that would be the challenge for me is like, if you won this, rec- uh, this commitment next week, as these crystal balls would have many believing, what are the chances you think that Oklahoma can get him to signing day, Colin? That's going to be the real hurdle for me. I remember you talk about how much that offer and acceptance carried when it comes to Stanford. I remember a long, long time ago, a guy by the name of Caden Smith, who was a former teammate of mine, he was the number one tight end by some recruiting outlets. I believe 24-7 sports had him at number three. I mean, the dude was a monster. I knew Texas A&M really wanted him. Uh, Alabama, a lot of major programs were pursuing this guy. And I still remember as soon as he got the Stanford offer, he looked at a bunch of us and said, oh, I want to go to Stanford. I mean, that's how fast the Cardinal can flip a prospect's mind as soon as they know they have a guaranteed spot. Uh, whereas the MIM situation was, okay, he was a longtime Stanford commit, if I remember correctly, and then eventually flipped to Oklahoma right. as they got closer to signing day. This could very much be a position where Stanford has an opportunity to get some revenge if you want to put some flashy terms on it because – Again, this is a, a school that Kabanj has said in the past is a dream location of his. I mean, it's a university that he's always envisioned himself going to. But, of course, as we've mentioned, you just don't know the process of getting there right now. Whereas Oklahoma, there's probably a little bit more of a clear-cut path. So while the commitment could very well happen here in the next few days, what transpires afterwards is really what you have to follow. Because the moment that the Stanford Cardinals know – that they can get that guy on campus and guarantee him a spot, that, for me, is when the race is really going to amp up. And I, again, I can't point to it enough. I mean, Stanford was at one point the crystal ball leader for this guy, and it wasn't even close. And now, as we've seen, as the process has kind of unfolded, Oklahoma's taking control, but nothing could really sway me away from the idea that Stanford could regain some momentum in this thing as signing day approached. 